Hey everybody, Jake here with The Brave and the Boys, and today we're doing one of our most requested videos ever, our top 10 favorite Batman stories. Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Organic Price Books. There, if you're buying one to three books, you can save $2 with the code BRAVEBOYS, or if you're buying four or more, you can save 5% with the code BRAVEBOYS. Sit. Batman is my favorite superhero and someone very near and dear to my heart, so I'm very excited to make this list. I'm going to go in my order, so start with number 10, go down to number one. Let's dive into my favorite Batman stories. Deep within a bleak and dismal swamp, hidden beneath its murky waters, lies the headquarters of the most sinister villains of all time, the Legion of Doom. Coming in at number 10, we're going to have Batman by Grant Morrison. This might be a little controversial since a lot of people love this run, and I actually love most of it. So the thing about it, though, why it's not higher up on this list is you do have to jump around and read some different things. So Grant Morrison came on with Batman and just changed everything with his pinnacle. I honestly, one of the best stories in it, Batman and Son. Batman and Son introduces the character of Damian Wayne, who you guessed it, is Batman's biological son. He was trained by the League of Assassins and his mother Talia al Ghul and his grandfather Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul or however you're supposed to pronounce it. And he is just a cold-blooded killer, you know, because he was raised by assassins. And then he finds out, he, you know, he meets his father, Batman, and Batman trains him to be a Robin in his own right. And it's just the dynamic between them is just super interesting. Then Grant Morrison made his crisis event, Final Crisis. So you're going to start out reading most of this. Then you're going to jump over to Final Crisis. You can do the Absolute or the Omni, but honestly, I prefer the Absolute. Then you're going to go back to this. And then you can read two and three. Two is my personal favorite. It's going to pick up after a little spoiler that you can see on the cover right here, where Batman is now Dick Grayson, who is my absolute favorite character. And you have Dick Grayson as kind of like this fun, loving, you know, free spirited, jokey Batman. And then you get Damian Wayne as this angry Robin, you know, this gruff Robin, serious Robin. So it's like a juxtaposition of the normal dichotomy of Batman and Robin. And it's super cool. Volume three is, wasn't my personal favorite. It's going to really follow along the Batman Incorporated run where basically Bruce Wayne funds a bunch of international Batmans from around the world. Really cool characters. But for me, I feel like the run kind of petered out. It started out super high got even better in the middle and then kind of petered out a little bit. So, but I still think it's definitely worth reading. It had to be on my top 10 list. Um, they do exist in a couple of different formats. So they just announced an absolute edition of Batman and Son, which I'm totally going to pick up. They have a absolute edition of Batman Incorporated and they're just super cool books. But the Omnis are definitely, you know, a really good way to go to get the whole story. You do want to read Final Crisis, like I said. So Batman by Grant Morrison was amazing. I really love Grant Morrison's themes on the Joker. Different writers will have different interpretations of different characters. And I think what he talked about with the Joker was super interesting. So while it was controversial, while there were things that were a little cerebral and a little, little you know, wacky and out there, Grant Morrison's run is definitely worth picking up even if you need to do a little bit of additional reading and jumping around. Overall though, definitely a story worth reading. You definitely want to read it for what he does with the character. And now let's jump into number nine. Coming in at number nine, we have one of the best jumping on point for new readers, and that's going to be the new 52 reboot done by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. It is just fantastic. So it's going to start off incredibly strong with the Court of Owls and City of Owls storyline where Batman goes up against the secret society known as the Court of Owls. And what I love about this Batman is he has all of his Robins. It's kind of a condensed version, a streamlined version, and it's just a great point where you don't need to know previous Batman continuity, you can just jump on here. And then the stories just stay high octane for a really long time. Upping the ante from the Court of Owls and City of Owls, you have Joker Death of the Family, where the Joker returns in the new continuity and he just goes after Batman's family. And it's just creepy imagery, incredible art. I hope we get an absolute of it someday. And then because of editorial mandate, he was forced to do a new origin story for Batman, which was Batman Zero Year. So that's kind of like, you know, it goes zero year, then year one, you know, a little, little proto thing. But it is an excellent storyline also. Then we get into volume two of the Scott Snyder run. Personally, the strongest in volume two is Endgame, which is the return of the Joker again. I'm not the biggest fan of Joker as a villain, but Endgame, he just is a force of nature and it's an awesome story. So definitely worth picking up. It's also going to include what they consider their final Batman story, Batman The Last Night on Earth. <laughs> 
Where it starts to falter without giving spoilers is the protagonist of the book changes, so it's going to be a different interpretation of Protector of Gotham, and for me that wasn't my favorite thing. Um, but if you want to continue their through line of Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder teamwork, you could read Dark Knight's Metal. That's a whole other can of worms we won't get into too much here. We've covered it in previous videos that I'll link here, but you get to see kind of like that through line that they started here and carried on through here and it is just awesome i highly recommend it while it starts out at the pinnacle of batman it does falter a little towards the end but it's definitely completely worth reading and that is why it's number nine on my list coming in at number eight we have the batman adventures omnibus now this is an even better choice for new readers because it exists outside of mainline dc continuity so this was the comic book tie-in to the batman animated tv series which is, I think, the pinnacle and perfect representation of Batman and the Joker and basically every Batman character. It was just Bruce Timm and Paul Dini just cooked on that show. So this is going to be written by Kelly Puckett with art by Mike Parabek and is going to be influenced by Paul Dini and influenced by Bruce Timm. And it is just an excellent story. The art style just perfectly emulates the animated TV series. And when you're reading it, it feels like these are lost episodes of the cartoon. It's just classic Mark Hamill Joker, classic Kevin Conroy Batman. When you're reading, I mean, I read every Batman book with Kevin Conroy's voice and Mark Hamill's voice in my head, but this one, it's, it's, it's literally like you're watching the TV show. So it is going to have the comic book adaptation of Mask of the Phantasm, which is my favorite Batman movie, live action or animated. And it is one that should be on everybody's list. And it is just a fantastic, fun Batman Omni that you don't need to know any context going into it. You can just read it, enjoy it. And it had to be on this list. Coming in at number seven, we have one of my favorite Batman storylines of all time. The only reason it's not higher up on this list is to me, it is the perfect Bat family storyline. So what does that mean? A Bat man book versus a Bat family book. This was the Detective Comics Rebirth run done by James Tynan, who is one of the best comic book writers ever. He did like Something is Killing the Children, Nice House on the Lake, and he's doing uh, Dracula right now. So he's just an incredible writer. So his Bat man run really focused on a collection of characters batman forms a team with tim drake who's arguably the best robin cassandra kane spoiler clayface and batwoman and they form a team to take on threats that batman can't take on alone and the team does not do well at first they have personality conflicts and issues clayface doesn't know how to be a hero cassandra kane doesn't know how to speak batwoman doesn't know how to lead and it is an incredible story to see how they've come together and they form and they deal with loss and villains that are very interesting and unique, villains that are very close to home for them. And they were not a team that flowed great from the start, but you get to watch small moments and big moments and watch the team form together to be a cohesive unit. And you get to see amazing villains, some that are super close to home, and you get to see a alternate team that protects Gotham where Batman alone is not enough. And it was incredible. One of the best rebirth runs out there and it is fully collected. You have to give it a shot, it's super good, and it is one of the best runs out there. Coming in at number six, we have the Rebirth Run on Batman done by Tom King, and this is a series that's very near and dear to my heart. This is one of the few series I've triple dipped on, so I own the single issues, the trade paperbacks, and the deluxe editions, and yes, when the Omni comes out, I'll buy it. You know, I'll probably be a quadruple dipper, but it is incredible. So it's really going to focus on what makes Batman Batman, what makes Bruce Bruce, really kind of take away core elements of his life. Giant things happen. His character has changed a lot. The Bat family has changed a lot. His love life, his family has changed a lot. And it's a really good run. So it's going to start out with the I Am Gotham run, where two new heroes come to Gotham with basically like Superman powers, Gotham and Gotham Girl. It's going to go into the I Am Bane, I Am Suicide run, which is kind of like a little mini trilogy. And then it's going to focus a lot on the romance between Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle, the Catwoman. It has some incredible villains, some shocking moments. And yes, there were some parts in the middle that kind of meandered a little bit. Some that kind of felt like filler. Reading this week to week didn't do it any favors because you'd wait a couple weeks for it to come out. You would read it and then you were like, oh, we're still on this dream arc, you know? 
but reading it collected does it a lot more favors and I think I look at it a lot more favorably now. If you haven't checked it out or you only read it in single issues, it's worth going back to. And definitely when the Omni comes out someday, you gotta pick it up. Coming in at number six, we have another Scott Snyder book on the list. That is gonna be Absolute Batman Black Mirror. This was done by some incredible artists. So Jock gets a lot of the credit, but there's also Francisco and it is an incredible storyline. So just like in the second volume of Grant Morrison's Batman, this is gonna be when Dick Grayson or Nightwing was the Cape Crusader and it is an awesome storyline. So what I love about this is you kind of have Nightwing who is the son of Batman and then you have James Gordon which is the son of Jim Gordon and you have these parallel sons of Batman and sons of Gordon and they're kind of just mirror images of each other almost like a black mirror of each other. <laughs> okay that was terrible I'm gonna cut that part out. But essentially Dick Grayson has to solve a mystery and uncover this secret auction that's happening find a serial killer and it is just really cool to see the mystery unfold this art these incredible splash pages and that incredible art by both artists was just a sight to behold now i will say this absolute edition is out of print but they did just solicit a deluxe edition that's coming out next year so i'm gonna say you don't have to spring for the absolute i'm very happy that i did but the deluxe edition is also going to be one that you have to pick up batman black mirror incredible storyline if you love Dick Grayson, you gotta see him as Batman, you gotta check it out. Batman Black Mirror is an amazing standalone storyline. You get to see Dick Grayson as Batman and it is totally worth checking out. You gotta give it a shot. Let's move on to the next one on the list. Coming in at number five, we have the start of my Batman continuity, the amazing Batman Year One by Frank Miller and David Mazzuccelli. So for me, this is the start of my continuity. After Crisis on Infinite Earths, DC went to Frank Miller and said, we want a jumping on point for Batman. And he created a storyline, a four issue storyline that showcases the first year of Bruce Wayne becoming Batman and James Gordon becoming a member of the Gotham PD. And it is really cool. Like from the opening of the book, I love it. It like set the tone where you have Bruce Wayne taking a private jet into Gotham City, talking about how this is no way to enter Gotham. You should enter Gotham from the trains and from the streets and like talks about how like he should be down there with the people. And it's juxtaposed by James Gordon taking a train into Gotham going like, what am I doing? How can I bring my family here? Going into Gotham by train, there's no way to go to Gotham. And it is an incredible storyline. Some amazing iconography of Batman and Catwoman that is carried out for the rest of the time on Batman. Stuff is like that famous scene where he's sitting in a chair, should I ring the bell or not, you know? An incredible storyline. It is, in my mind, one of the two pinnacle moments of Batman done by Frank Miller. The rest, you know, the less we say the better. But yes, Frank Miller's Batman Year One is incredible. So you can collect it in an Absolute Edition, which does come with the original newspaper coloring, or you can get the recoloring done on the Deluxe Edition or on this one. Or if you want something fun coming out soon is IDW is coming out with a gallery edition of Batman Year One or an artist edition that yes, I'm sure Jordan or I or both will pick up too. So Batman Year One, it's gotta be on your list. It's the origin of the Cape Crusader and you have to read it. Coming in at number three is a very special story that is going to be the absolute Batman hush. DC paired up arguably their best Batman writer, Jeff Loeb, with one of their best artists, Jim Lee, and said, you know what, make a story with every Batman character, any villain you want, the entire rogues gallery, and throw in a cool mystery in there, this cool villain named Hush who wears a bunch of bandages on his face, and just go crazy. And literally every page is a masterclass in Jim Lee art, and it's incredible. I'm sure if you've seen most people's Batman posters in their room, such as Jordan, it's, it's a poster from this book, and it is fantastic. If all you've seen is the animated Hush movie, throw that out of the window. They changed two Hushes. It's a way better mystery inside the book and you have to read it. Now, let's get down to brass tacks for a second. Do you need the Hush Omnibus? If you have Hush in Absolute or a Deluxe Edition and you have the Paul Dini Omnibus, you probably don't. This is going to include Heart of Hush and all of the Paul Dini Batman stuff that I think is really good. But if you want to have a more complete storyline, the Hush Omnibus is the way to go. Now, why is it not here? It's not here because it didn't deliver yet. It's currently shipping to my house right now, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys. I probably should have waited until it came in. But yes, whether it's the Absolute or the Omnibus, Hush is my top three Batman story. 
coming in at number two, we have one of the most controversial absolutes, that is Absolute Dark Knight Returns, written and drawn by Frank Miller. So, Dark Knight Returns is one of the most important pieces of not just Batman, but in all of DC Comics, I think. For a lot of people that I've talked to, they had stopped reading comics. And then in 1986, a four-issue Batman series came out. And this was a storyline set in the future of a Batman coming out of retirement. What the hell is that? Because Gotham City has fallen to hell. They're being infested by a gang of mutants. And it's just like, it's a, a grizzled Batman. This was a serious take on Batman. And for a lot of people, this brought them back into comics. It was like a one-two punch of this and Watchmen coming out that really just revitalized comics as a medium. So like, I can't stress how important this storyline is. And I had always heard from people, Dark Knight Returns is amazing. Dark Knight Returns is amazing. To me, it was like The Godfather. I had heard The Godfather was an amazing movie. And the more people that told me it was amazing, the less I wanted to watch it because I didn't think it could ever live up to the expectations. But just like The Godfather lived up for movies, this lived up for comics. So I, this is not my copy. I'm gonna get the reprint that comes out in February. This is Jordan's copy. And he was gracious enough to let me borrow it. And I read the four issue series and it has incredible moments such as the return of Two-Face, the return of the Joker and Batman putting the beat down on the mutant gang leader. And you get to see Batman inspire a city. You get to see amazing moments such as his fight with Superman. It's an incredible storyline. And then I realized, hey, I finished The Dark Knight Returns. Why is there still half an absolute left? And that is because what comes with the best comes with the worst. This has one of my least favorite storylines ever. And that was the sequel follow up, The Dark Knight Strikes Again. So that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. DC paid Frank Miller like a million dollars to come back. And what they created was one of my least favorite comics, least favorite stories I've ever read in my entire life. The art is terrible. The coloring is garish in the words of Omnidog. And like the things that they do in the storyline are bonkers. That being said, it's still worth reading. Just understand that, you know, if I could pay more money for an absolute that only had the Dark Knight Returns, I would do it. So, you know, I hope to debate my friend Taylor Talks Comics someday because he, he wants to sell me on the book why I should, you know, maybe be a little kinder to it, you know, and, I, and I'd love to have that debate. But just know that I'm not putting the whole absolute as number two. I'm putting the Dark Knight Returns as number two on my Batman list. And coming in at number one, you have my favorite Batman storyline, Batman by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. This book is a masterclass. Now there's a couple different ways you can collect it. There are three absolutes that yes, are long out of print. Hopefully they come back someday. If you wanna see the story of how I collected these whales, you can watch that video here. It is collected in what I assume is a mostly evergreen Omni that might be out of print now, I don't know but I know what's currently in print are three deluxe editions. These are gonna tell almost like a year two Batman, but it's much better than Batman year two. So this is gonna start with a earlier Batman and you get to see the evolution of his rogues gallery and how Batman goes from dealing with the mob to dealing with costume freak and vigilantes. Haunted Night is going to include a couple of these one-off storylines done by the amazing art of Tim Sale. He fights Scarecrow on Halloween, pretty cool storyline. And it's gonna include what takes place after the other ones, Catwoman win in Rome. But the main meat of the storylines are gonna be Long Halloween and Dark Victory. Long Halloween follows Batman on his quest to hunt down the Holiday Killer, a killer who kills people on, you guessed it, a holiday. And they leave their little calling card. And it's an amazing mystery. There's twists and turns. And you get to see the rise and fall of Harvey Dent into Two-Face. You get to see the Joker. You get to see the kind of the birth of the whole rogues gallery. It, there's an amazing Solomon Grundy issue where they have Thanksgiving dinner together. It's an awesome storyline. It is then followed up in the sequel, Dark Victory. Now, Dark Victory is the one that I think is super, super out of print. But this is going to be a story that's very near and dear to my heart. So it's going to take place and kind of wrap up all the loose ends that year one left open. And you get to see the rise of... Dick Grayson, and it has some amazing, amazing artwork. It has my favorite Batman panel of all time, which shows the aftermath of Robin's parents' death at Haley Circus 
and kind of everyone has left the circus and you see Dick Grayson down below kneeling by his parents and Batman watching from afar and no and you know he's he understands what it's like to lose your parents and that right there is you see the connection between Robin and Batman and it is incredible and I love how light and fun Robin is towards the end of this book so you got to check it out Batman by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale is my pinnacle Batman it is the most truest to the essence of Batman you don't need any continuity you know you just you got to read it it's it's the pinnacle of batman to me let's go into my final thoughts and that's going to bring this video to a close i hope you enjoyed following along on my top 10 list of the best batman stories ever i had a lot of fun making it i had even more fun reading all of these books so yeah i mean i this is just a video that was a long time coming batman's my favorite character i should have done a video a long time ago of my favorite storylines i want to give a shout out one more time to organic price books if you want to pick up any of these that are still in print you can use our sponsor organic price books there if you're buying one to three books you can save two dollars with the code brave boys or if you're buying four or more you can save five percent with the code brave boys sit i want to thank you all so much for supporting the channel I want you to comment down below what your favorite Batman story is or what your top 10 list would be. If you like the video, smash that like button, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. We'll have the Discord link down below if you want to meet some comic book friends. We have merch. I'm not wearing merch. I'm wearing a Usagi t-shirt. But guys, thank you all so much for the love and support. It really means the world to us. We you know, couldn't do any of this without you guys. And we just love talking comics. We love the community and we love all of you guys. So keep reading and stay brave.